Hello everyone, welcome to the Cloud Careers YouTube channel. This is the session four of a free Linux training, which is a very much important to start your DevOps journey. As a part of that, before I start, I would like to give a quick recap on what's being covered in the previous session. In the previous session, we realized that Linux is a command line interface, which means we interact with the Linux using commands. Whatever the action that you want to perform will go through command. Again, in Linux, everything is a file. So which means when, when you're starting something, when, when you got an issue or when you're working on something, the very first point that should trigger in your mind is in Linux, everything is a file. Whether you consider a disk, whether you consider a directory, whether you consider a folder, everything is considered as a file. Again, in files, there are different varieties of files, but to start with in Linux, everything is a file. Again, in Linux, everything is case sense too. That means whatever the file names that you create, whatever the usernames that you use to connect, everything is case sense too. For example, here, learning.txt with lowercase letters and learning.txt with uppercase letter L, both of them are different as per Linux. It is not like Windows, okay? And if you want to connect to CentOS at the right IP address, ensure you use the lowercase letters because if you use CentOS C, it's going to report it as a error or you'll fa your authentication will be reported as a failure authentication. And again, the another important point that you need to uh, accept is in Linux, there is no concept of recycle bin. That means if you delete something, everything is gone, okay? If you delete a file, the file is gone forever, okay? Again, you have the concept of backup, which you can use to retrieve, but it's a second story, but on a lay to Linux, if you delete something, you cannot get it back, okay? So with that, I would like to start the next portion of the session. But whatever I'm going to teach, everything is enclosed in this Linux notes repository. So the repository will be attached in the description of the video. Please ensure you check the video so you don't have to take a note. I have already supplied it in the form of a GitHub repository to you. Okay. And another request to each and everyone whosoever is watching the content. If you like the content and if you like the approach, please ensure you like the video and subscribe to our channel. That ensures that that helps us motivate to post further videos. And if you have any questions, concerns, queries, or anything, please feel free to comment your questions. I'll try to respond you back as early as possible. Okay, so coming back to the story, in, in Linux, everything is a file. Okay, everything is a file. And if you, if you want to interact with Linux, it is 100% through commands. <clears throat> okay, it is 100% through commands. So how, how can we start learning commands? So for example, First, let's try to understand the syntax of Linux. Okay, this is the syntax of Linux. Okay, for example, whatever the command that you want to do, this is the command line syntax. That means whatever the command that you want to execute, followed by the options, followed by the inputs. Okay, and the options can be, if it is a single character, you can give it with a single hyphen. And if it's having a single word, okay, you need to give it a hyphen double ones. For example, uh, uname is a command, which is going to tell you the name of the machine and hyphen hyphen help, which means you are giving the whole word. Or if you want to give a single character, you can also give hyphen H, okay? Like a command followed by the options. So, for, okay, so let me try to connect to my server and show you. I just started the server before the before I record the session. I just started, I started the server. Now I would like to copy my public IP address of the machine. Copy this, let me open my Excel. What happened to my Excel? Let me open it. Or let me open it here. SSH, CentOS. This is my Git bash terminal. So I'm connecting to the server. I'm entering the password. Password as password one, two, three. Enter the password. I connected to the server. So the in Linux, the very first thing when you're learning a C program or when you're learning any Java program, you first learn with hello world program, right? Similarly, in Linux, you start with uname command. Uname is a command which tells you what it is, okay? It's, it, it's telling what exactly it is, okay? The beauty of Linux is if you want to know something, you don't have to go outside of Linux machine, okay? Or you don't have to search in the internet as well. The beauty of Linux is you get most of it inside your Linux itself. And since Linux is an open source, uh, open source software, and whatever the commands, whatever the things that you are using, everything is contributed by great software developers across the world. 
and when each and every developer develops the particular command like you name or cat whatever it say maybe they have published the respect to manual page for that command so man is a command which is a manual page for a command so for example i want to know what are all the options that it does you just type man you name can you see this you name prints the system information mm -hmm. and if you give you name hyphen a or hyphen a and all it is going to print all the information and if you want to just print what is a kernel name okay we already discussed what is a kernel kernel is the first layer of any operating system that is a piece of software which directly interacts with the hardware okay if any of the instruction that is of your operating system if it's talking to the hardware or uh, hardware which is nothing but the firmware that is through the kernel and and this is also one of the most famous ask famously asked interview question how do you know the kernel name how do you know the kernel release or how do you know the kernel version of your linux okay so how do you know the processor type okay so these are the questions that you came ac come across in interviews if you are applying for a beginner roles so for example let me try to see this I'm copy this so if i type you name hyphen hyphen all Okay, whenever you're using a word, you need to use hyphen hyphen, or if you want to get the same information with a single character, you can also use hyphen A. It also gives you the same information. It tells it's a Linux and it's the IP address of the machine and a kernel name and kernel version, everything you're getting. For example, if you want to just have the kernel released, you can get that, okay? So this is how you can get the information of the machine. Okay, this is how you can get the kernel release. Okay, and x86 indicates it is a 64 bit hardware. Okay, what type of CPU it is, whether it is a 64 bit hardware or a 32 bit hardware. 64 bit hardware is nothing but processor is nothing but it can process 64 bits at a time. And whatever the hardware that you see, and most of them are 64 bit right now. And in interview, if you are being asked, what, how do you check what is whether it is a, your processor is 32 bit or 64 bit? You can use Junem command and you can figure it out. Okay, and which is nothing but uh, which is which is a proof that in Linux you can get most of the commands from the Linux manual page only. Okay, and if you don't know anything about the command, all you need to do is just say hyphen hyphen help, which is going to show you all the available options. Okay, I don't know anything about your name. I just type hyphen hyphen help, like you're asking someone. Okay, so for example, you join a company and uh, you don't know something, you ask for her some help, right? Like your senior. Similarly, in Linux, if you don't know something, you can ask the same system itself. You name hyphen H or any command that you need help, followed by hyphen hyphen help, which is going to show you the information or the help related information about it. And if you see this, S is going to show you the kernel name, and R is going to show you the release version and it's going to show you the kernel version. And if you want to see what is a processor type, you can also see this. For example, the same command, if I execute it with P, it shows you it is a 64-bit processor type or 64-bit hardware, okay? And if you want to know the hardware platform, you can use this. It's the x86 hardware only, okay? And if you want to know the operating system, <clears throat> just so I can, it says it is a GNU Linux. GNU stands for generally not Unix. As I said in the session one itself, Linux is a kernel or an operating system which is created keeping the Unix as an inspiration, but they want to create something which should give you, which should which should work like Unix, but it should not be Unix, okay? So yeah, they want to develop something with an inspiration of Unix, but not a copy of Unix. So GNU is a community which emphasizes to develop Linux, keeping the inspiration of Unix in mind. Okay, it says that generally not Unix. Okay, it's also called as GNU Linux. People call it as. Okay, you take any command, you name, uh, you take any command, the command followed by hyphen hyphen help or man of that command is something which gives you most of the information. All right. And yeah, so we know how to see the hardware. Okay, uh, the CPU hardware. Or if you want to see, we know how to see the kernel version, kernel release or the kernel name. Now, when you, when you buy any computer, what are all the three metrics that you see? In any 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 computer, whenever you want to buy any computer, so what you see in general, for example, if you want to buy a computer, so what are the metrics that decides? So first, you decide what is the CPU of the computer, right? What is the CPU of it? And you also want to check what is the memory of it and how much disk is allocated to it, right? Okay, these are the three metrics that majorly decides the price of your computer. Similarly, in, line, in, in 
in server based infrastructure also it's the same in windows you go to the system information and you can check most of the information right but in linux everything is through commands so for example i want to if you want to know the cpu related information all you need to do is you need to read a file and if you want to know the memory related information all you need to do is you need to read a file that means either you need to read a file or you need to execute the file okay so another important thing before i proceed how do you know the flavor of your linux how do you know the flavor of your linux so this is very important thing how to know the okay we already discussed what is a flavor or what is the distribution of linux so being a linux and open source edition a lot of people have customized it and a lot of uh, uh, brands or distributions have named it the different different names and they published it and flavor is also called as distribution you just consider it as a brand okay so let's try to see how to see the distribution of a linux so it's a very easy thing all you need to do is you need to understand in linux everything is a file and you need to understand that you need to read a file. So cat is a command, cat, cat is a command which helps you in reading a file, right? In Windows, you have a notepad, which is used to read the text-based content. Similarly, in Linux, cat is a command, which is used to read the content of a file, okay? So in system, in Linux-based system, all the system-based configuration is available inside a folder called as etc. Typically in Windows based, if you want to read something, you have like this, right? C backward slash users backward slash username backward slash something ABC backward slash file.txt, right? But in Linux, you don't see any backward slashes. Instead, you see a forward slash. The moment you see the forward slash, you can understand that it is a Linux based machine. Okay, so Linux always uses the forward slashes. That is a major difference between Windows and Linux. Okay, if you want to read any file, cat is a command. Cat is a command which helps you in reading a file. Cat, in Linux, all the system configuration is available inside a directory called as etc. If you want to have some system configuration related information, you can find it inside the directory called as etc. Okay, and if it is a Red Hat based machine, you will have some, for example, if it is CentOS, you'll have CentOS hyphen release. If it is Ubuntu, you'll have Ubuntu dot release. Okay, Ubuntu hyphen release. Irrespective of that, if you want this command to be worked in any flavor of Linux, just try to use star. Star includes include everything that ends with release. Okay, the main advantage of using this command is this works in any flavor of Linux. Okay, if an interview, if they ask you, how do you know the flavor of the Linux? You can say cat etc xe release this is the command if you read the file it's going to tell you which version which flavor of linux it is let's try to do that cat xe release sorry cat xe star hyphen release okay now you can see that it is a linux centos linux of release 7.9.2009 of type core okay this is the information you can get so you can understand that it is a centos 7 Okay, CentOS 7.9.2009, major version, minor version, patch version. Okay, this is a core, core Linux, core CentOS Linux. This is how you can know the operating system or the flavor or the distribution of your Linux. Okay, uh, there are in the beginning of the session itself, we have discussed that in Linux majorly, we talk about either Red Hat Linux, which is nothing but the core distribution is from company community called as Fedora or Ubuntu based Linux. Ubuntu is from the community called as a Debian. Okay, but it is from the community Fedora, Red Hat Enterprise Linux Fedora. All right, this is how you can know the C operating system related information. Good. Now, how do I come to know the processor related information? And how do I come to know the memory related information? Now we know how to see the CPU, how to see the uh, flavor of your Linux machine. But now how can I see the CPU, memory and disk? Hmm. If you want to see the CPU, just read the file, which is present in the inside the directory called as proc. Okay. Inside the proc directory, CPU related information and memory related information files are available. CPU proc inside the directory called as proc. 
there is a file called as CPU information, which is going to give you all the information that is related to your CPU. Enter a command, you can see that the number of CPUs that are allocated, whether it is an Intel processor or a Z uh, uh, AMD processor, whether it is a Xeon processor, again in Intel, they have a lot of varieties and it is a 2.4 giga H. So CPU's metric is clock speed. Okay, this clock speed of your CPU is 2.4 gigahertz processor, and you can see how many physical cores are allocated, and you can see you can see the number of processes that are allocated, and what is the physical ID of the CPU, and what is the stepping, and what is the model of it, how many cores are allocated, everything that is related to your CPU, you can see it. And this is what I'm referring. CPU core is nothing but how many CPUs are allocated. Here, the number of CPUs that are allocated is one. Okay, because we have created a T3 micro. T3 micro is a machine on AWS instance type, which gives you one CPU and one gig of memory. Okay, that's it. Now I want to know the memory related information. Okay, and again, I'm repeating whatever the content I'm discussing, you can get all the commands that I'm using inside the GitHub Linux notes repository, which I have attached inside the description of this video. Please ensure you check that. Now, we know how to see the CPU information. Now, how can I see the memory related information? Come to the same Linux machine, cat proc meminfo. Okay, this, this file shows you a lot of information about memory, but I don't need that much. All I care is how much is the total memory allocated and out of that, how much is free and how much is available. How much is available? You can see it shows in the KB. If you convert into gigs, it's like one GB. And out of that, eight GB is free. And memory available is 7.8 GB. And how much is buffer? How much is cached? All these things you can see. Okay. And what is the difference between free memory and memory available is a very important question. Try to Google it and try to understand it better. And it's it's a very important and very crucial thing. So try to understand that what is the difference between free memory and free av available memory. I'll try to give that as an assignment to all the viewers who is watching. And if anyone, uh, whosoever has drafted the difference between available memory and free memory, so please try to comment it. I'll try to respond back. So this is a very, very, very important question that is being asked in almost all the interviews. What is the difference between free memory and available memory? I request you to consider this as an assignment and as per your understanding, please try to post in the description or please try to post in the comment section of the video. I really appreciate and I'll try to get a uh, respond back with my comments. This is how we can see the kernel information, system information, CPU information and memory related information. Good. What's next? What's next? So what's next? Hmm. Perfect. So we know how to read a file, right? How to read a file, but how to create a file? That is something we haven't discussed, right? That we have not discussed it. Let's try to understand it. Okay. So in Linux, everything is a file. If you want to create a file, touch is a command followed by the file name dot txt. So here you need to understand one very important point that should be marked in quotes. In Linux, there is no concept of file extensions. Okay, which means in Windows, if you create a file and if you extend it with dot txt, it will be opened by the application notepad. If you write a file and name it as a WRD, it's going to be opened by your Microsoft Word. And if the same application, if you if the same file, if you extend it or save it with a .xlx or CSV, it will be opened by your Microsoft Excel. So in Windows, the extensions of the file matters a lot. But in Windows, but in Linux, there is no concept of file extension. So in, in Linux, consider that as a file, but all the operators, all the administrators, all the engineers typically try to give the name of the file as file name.txt or file name.log or file name.sh. That is just to give you a human as a feel. Since we are so much used to the Windows ecosystem, we tend to create the files with those extensions. 
but for linux it's just a file name technically either you can write or save the file as abc.txt or abc.log end of the day linux considers that as a just a text file okay so if i create file name.txt it really doesn't mean that it's a text file so text file the file extension is just for our understanding only human understanding only okay so touch is a command to create a file in linux okay either you can create one file or you can also create multiple files together in a short okay so you can also create file name.txt abc.log xyz.txt you can also create multiple files together okay let's try to see the things in action now ls ls is a command which is going to show you the list of files in the directory where you are in. What is a directory? So directory is a word which refers folder in Linux. In Windows ecosystem, we refer folder, right? But in Linux, we don't use the word folder. Instead, we use the word called as directory, okay? If you want to see which directory you are in, pwd is a command. pwd stands for present working directory. PWD stands for present working directory. And if you want to see in which directory you're in, you can use the command PWD, which is going to show you which directory you're in, okay? So since I have signed in as a user CentOS, I can see my home directory as home CentOS. If you have signed in as a user like Mike, you can see your home directory as home Mike, okay? So for now, I'm inside the directory called as PWD. Now. If you want to list the files that are in your present working directory, the command to use is ls. ls is a command which, which, which asks the system to list the files that are present inside the present working directory. ls is going to show you there are no files. Now I would like to create files. Touch linux.txt, ls, you can see the file. Touch devops.txt. You can see the file. Now I would like to create multiple files. Okay, touch aws.txt, kubernetes.txt, terraform.txt, jenkins.log. <coughs> now it's going to create four files together. Unless, can you see this? All the files are shown up. All the files are shown up. Now, if you want to see what are all the available options for this directory, what you can do is man ls. Now it's going to show you all the available options that are available for list command. Or if you're not comfortable with this, you can also use ls hyphen hyphen help. Now it can also show you all the available options. Okay. Now, if you want to see the items as a long listing format, which means rather than showing the listed objects on horizontal instead if you want to see it vertically you can use ls hyphen l let me see that ls ls hyphen l can you see this now it's displaying with few other details what these other details are we'll discuss it very soon but if you want to print something with respect to the timestamps you can use ls hyphen l but it also has a lot of other options ls hyphen 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 l and if you see if you use other options like R recursively, recursively is nothing but it is going to print in reverse order based on the time which they were created. While the latest which is created will be shown at the, or the latest which is created or the file which is modified will be shown at the bottom, okay? The people also use something called as T very often, sort by modification by time, newest first, okay? So let's try to <laughs> see that LS hyphen LTR. Can you see this? Now it's going to show you the files that are created in the order. Now let's try to see last.txt. Now if you hit the same command, you can see it's just a proof that the files which are created in the last will be shown at the last of the file. The files that are created at the latest will be shown at the bottom of the display. Okay, now you know how to create a file and we also learned ls is something we learned and pwd is something which we have learned. And along with that, we also saw touch. Touch is a command which helps you in creating a file. PWD stands for which present working directory, which is going to display the current working directory of the file. And ls is a command, which is going to list the content that is available in the present working directory. 
that's it. And another important thing that you need to remember is how to delete a file. That is another important thing. Now we know how to create a file, but how to delete a file. Again, removing is a very dangerous option because you don't have the concept of recycle bin. If you delete something, it's gone forever. And that's the reason when you delete something, we always try to take a backup of the file. Mm. I'll teach you how to take a backup of the file. Before that, I would like to show you how to delete a file. RM. RM stands for remove a file or remove a directory, which helps you in deleting a file. So if you want a few other options, just type this. You can also read remove or unlink the file hyphen F forcefully delete the file. Okay, so if you want to delete the file, you just need to say RM followed by the file name ls ltr. You can see I would like to remove the file last.txt rm last.txt. Okay, now if you see this, the file is deleted ls ltr. You don't see the file, you don't see the file. So RM is a very dangerous option. Now we know how to create a file and how to delete a file. Now, how to rename a file? If you want to rename a file in Windows, it's very straightforward thing. All you do is you right click the file and then you rename it and then you type the name of your choice, right? In Linux, everything is a file and this is how you do it. MV source file name that you want to rename and new name to the file. Okay, so this is how this is a syntax which helps you in renaming the file. <clears throat> okay, renaming the file, for example, ls ltr. I would like to rename the file aws.txt with aws with devops.txt. Let's try to see that mv aws devops with aws.txt. Now, what I'm doing is I am renaming a file aws.txt with DevOps with aws.txt. Let's enter the command ls. Now, if you see this, the file whose name is aws.txt is renamed with DevOps with aws.txt. Hmm. Now, renaming a file has two use cases, which is very important and which is commonly asked in interviews. Let me try to show you that how to rename a file. Let's try to show you that this is very important scenario. How to rename a file? So, and the syntax for that is this mv file name, new file name. This is the syntax. Now, what is the use case? So, now you're trying to rename a file from x to y. Now, what if, if the destination already has the file with the same name? Let's try to see that case one. If the destination doesn't exist, it will just rename the file. Okay. For example, you are changing the file name from X to Y. If you're just changing the file name from X to Y, and if the destination don't have any file with the name X to Y, if the destination doesn't exist, it simply renames the file. There is, there is nothing to discuss here as well. File x to y. Now case two, what if, if the destination has the file with the name y, okay? So if the destination, if the destination exists, which means the file that you're trying to rename y, if y already exists, you know what will happen? It just overwrites. Okay, so for example, if there is a file with the name y, which is having some content, and if you are trying to rename the file x to y, obviously the x will be renamed to y, which also means technically y, the content of y is renamed by the content of x. So that is the reason you should be very careful when you're renaming a file. In certain flavors and versions of Linux, you get a warning telling that the destination already have the file with the same name that you're trying to rename. But in certain flavors and versions, you don't get that warning. Consider that it won't change. Consider that it's not going to be give you warning and try to be more cautious. <clears throat> okay, this is 
very important thing and yeah so mu is also like cut and paste so technically mv stands for mu it's like cut paste when you do a cut paste technically you're renaming a file or you can also rename the file <clears throat> okay that's about it and in linux you also have a concept called as you also have a concept called as hidden files what do you mean by hidden what do you mean by hidden files so in linux any of the file that starts with hyphen is called as hidden file so for example ls hyphen ltr it's showing you this right instead if i use hyphen a ltr it's going to show you all the hidden files can you see this these are the files which are already there i have not created these files but these are not visible so for example i'll try to create a file called as dot devops aws dot txt ls hyphen ltr okay you're not able to see the devops dot txt file but if you use hyphen a flag it's going to show you all the hidden files as well all the <clears throat> hidden files as well all right this is how you can create and see the list of available hidden files all right that's it now yeah that's for that's in the session four if you like the content that is covered so far please ensure you uh, like the channel like the video and subscribe to the channel this motivates us and helps us post for more videos and i'm gonna cover a lot more content related to linux in our upcoming sessions not just this i'm gonna uh, come i'm gonna post linux sansible terraform duke docker kubernetes a lot more videos and all i want is encouragement from you guys please ensure you like the channel and uh, subscribe to our channel so that motivates us further thank you thanks for watching signing off see you in the next session